tooth and nail It's a rocky road, this pilgrim trail Pilgrim trail, pilgrim trail Sometimes heaven, sometimes hell Pilgrim trail, pilgrim trail Let's meet up down the pilgrim trail We're on this freight train going down the rail Together on this pilgrim trail Pilgrim trail, pilgrim trail Sometimes heaven, sometimes hell Pilgrim trail, pilgrim trail For everything is up for sale Pilgrim trail, pilgrim trail Summer night, the shot of love and the spark of love to be. Starts to light and the month I'm not burn like the ground I leave. I will leave it on the next train, baby. I do believe. Come on, let's ride this train. In my song I'm gonna pull my weight Don't get me wrong Brand new start And a whole new part They are big old shoes to fill I'll be there on that platform Babe, you know I will Come on Let's ride this Welcome to Tom's Trains and Things. I'm Tom Govichak, and this is the Monday Night Live Stream. We're ready to go, and we got the chat going. Mark is having some problems rendering. He thinks he's got some problems rendering, but his videos look all right to me. But that's on the, in the eye of the beholder. Uh, he thinks they don't look that well on the big screen, but uh, I think they look pretty good anyway. So... We got some good stuff going for you. Let me uh, bring you up to what's on the uh, 
over here on the module cam nothing going on over there except I put the two inches of foam and then over in the city part I got four inches of it over there because I didn't have any place to put the other stuff but you can see I got one of the kits over there halfway done I still got to do some more weathering and put the chimney on it and the sign on the top but we'll be working on that pretty soon uh, tomorrow again I still have a lot of things to do. I got the I got the trestle right here and I got the shed over here on the side. Let me see if we can get a shot at that over there on that little white thing right over there is where the where the shed is. I'm getting ready to put that thing together. I'm just going to put that together and stain it and so the same thing with the trestle. But today is uh we're going to talk about the um, turnouts and the servos. But before we get to that, let me do this right here. Uh, let me see. I don't have anything new for... Um, let me get this up here at the top. I don't have anything new for the train shows, but Suncoast Center for Fine Scale Modeling every third Saturday of the month now they have an open house and um, I just got my email so I think it's uh, when's the Saturday the 19th I'm not sure but as you can see on this on their web page they are open Saturday and Sunday in November the 16th and the 17th from 10 to 3 and one thing that I noticed on here they still show Dolly Varden uh, Railroad, Dolly Varden Mine, but in the uh, email that I got, they have no mention of it. So they have something from North Carolina, uh, uh, nor, uh, a, um, a module from North Carolina, and um, something else too, including the the one that I showed last year. I showed you something on the uh, the uh, switching layout that they have the the uh, uh, o scale switching layout that they uh, were showing when I was there. I was there in September last year, and they didn't have it out to the public yet. They still had it in the back room, but they weren't quite finished with it. So uh, we got to take a look at it. That's in one of my videos. But everything that I'm going to talk about is going to be in the chat in the. Um, afterwards so you could take a look at it after the video not during the video so uh, we could concentrate on the video here and um, there were some questions that I missed on last week's um, stream so I'll I'll get to them and if you have any questions this week I'll try to find uh, the questions on here I got my monitors closer this time let me see if I could pull it up I used to have them far away, but uh, I got them right here now. I used to have them way over, way over there, and they were kind of hard to see. So I got them real close now, so I could see see what I'm doing. So even though I have glasses, there it's still hard to see. So let me give you a sneak peek at this right here. This is the two inches of foam that I was talking about. And before we get to that part, you know I have to put that in there before we start at the workbench. But I wanted to show you because there were some people that didn't understand how to get your turnouts working. And I know Mark had a question about it. Uh, about uh, the foam on the on the last one, and I didn't get to address it. I think uh, Nathan uh, explained it to him. But anyway, here is what I have. I worked on a little display for it, and as you can see, I got two inches of foam. I got road bed here. Let me get it off this clamp. I just had that clamp there so it would stand up, so you could see it on the edge to see how thick it is. But that's what it looks like right there. I got a Y. This is a, a Walther's. Uh, I think it's a number four Y. And I, instead of using the manufactured uh, road bed, I just cut out a piece of the um, 
the road bed that I use on the bulk road bed that I got from Home Depot. Uh, right now you can't really get it unless you probably uh, tell them about it or um, ask them real nice to cut it less than the whole roll. But uh, for the last time that I looked and you know for about the last uh, maybe year and a half you had to buy the whole roll now to get uh, the uh, foam. But that's what I did on my that's what I did on my entire uh, layout up here was use the uh, uh, bulk road bed or bulk cork which is the underlayment quarter inch underlayment. So getting back to this thing right here I got T pins holding this down because I don't have anything glued down right now. Let me see if I can get these pins out of here and hope I don't break it while I do it. Oh my goodness. Oh man, that one is stuck. All right, so there's the turnout. Okay, boom. There's the road bed. Now I'm going to separate the two pieces right here, and you can see that. The one piece of foam, I have the servo mounted on a piece of uh, piece of wood, and I'll show you what type of wood it is, and it just uh, fits like that. You could shave down these um, screws right here if you need to, but anyway, it fits almost in there. You just have to cut a little hole in the uh, in the second piece of foam if you're going down two inches, because you can see the arm sticks out just a little bit. So what I did was I cut a piece out here for the arm and then cut a hole right over here for the wire to fit through. Yeah, right through there. And you don't have to go too deep because I mean that's probably maybe uh, a little bit over a half an inch, maybe five-eighths of an inch. But anyway, let me pop this out. You just cut yourself a hole in the foam, and this is mounted to a slat. Uh, let me see if I can get a piece of slat here. Right there, this is a quarter inch by one and a half by 36 inches. You can get these at Home Depot. And I just cut out a piece right here, uh, like two and a half inches. So. I could fit that real nice on these uh, servo mounts. And these servo mounts I got from Iowa Scaled Engineering, uh, which came out, let me see, it was 16 or no, $15 for six of these. So it comes out to $250 a piece. And they're really neat. And it's not very hard to bend this little wire here. You take, let me see if we can get this. This is 25 thousandths uh, piano wire. You don't need it this long, but uh, I just left it that long to make it easy to, to get the turnout in there. And you just cut it down later on. But uh, 25 thousandths, I use a duck bill pliers and just bend it a quarter inch. One, you know, quarter inch for, you know, one uh, 90 degree turn, then again 90 degree turn to make it so it fits underneath there. So this one right here, let me get this right here. This one, oops, wrong end. Let me get the other side here. This one right here is actually sticking straight up like that. Boom. And then you make another 90 degree turn to make it look like a little box. But then this one over here is only the thickness of the lever right there. And then once you get this you know, wound in there, you just uh, clamp this one down to hold it in place and it stays wherever you want it to. And these things are adjustable. They got nice slots in here so you can move this around on whatever you want to uh, mount it on. But uh, I 
I got this idea from when I was in Hagerstown when I was talking to uh, 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 what's his name? Milt, Milt Tigler. That's his name, Milt Tigner, Tigler. When I was talking to him, he was doing the turnouts, the O scale turnouts with fast, fast tracks, and he mounted the uh, Circutron tortoise machines right underneath, right onto the turnout, so he could just drop the turnouts right into place and that's where I got this idea right here since uh, you got two inches of foam plus another half inch of uh, plywood to go through plus uh, this quarter inch of uh, road bed right there and so that's all there is to it nothing to it and I'm not going to try to put it on there looking like this now you could now you can see a shadow right here. I got an extra light so you can see this really good, but normally I don't have that light there. I'm, I've been using that for my uh, bench work because I've been working right here doing um, my kits. So I could film some of them. I, I didn't film them like I normally do, but I got some of it filmed, and you I, you seen that earlier this week. I did a little bit about it. Let me go and say hi to everybody. Hello, everybody. So, my goodness, I got a lot of comments all on here already that I missed. Let me go. I seen one about. Uh, have to go all the way back here. My goodness. All right. There's where I was talking. Okay. So. Okay. So. We got. I know. Elmar asked the question. I remember it was Elmar. And I got to find it on here. Because I got seven pages of comments on here already. Okay, let me look. Sparky's here. Rick Bailey. Schuylkill River Valley. Southern 207 Hobbies. Jerry Satterall. m and Rails. We were talking a little bit earlier. George Gilliam. Rick Bailey, I said him. Dave Piper. Kent McBee. Who else? Flyboy2610. How you doing? I, I managed to make it to one of these. All right. I think this is the first time you're here. Okay, good. You're going to eat, eat supper while you watch. Okay, good deal. All right. So, let me see. Go on to the next page. Okay, everybody's saying hi to each other. Hey, Russ Ratzman, I haven't seen you in a long time. How you doing? Possum Bayou, there you go. Who else is here? I'm still looking for that one comment by Elmar. I keep seeing his name pop up here. Dave's Trains. How you doing? Okay. The only thing about this thing right here. Okay. Who does that? Chazco's here. Solo Contracting. All right. Where are we going? Let me go the other way here. I know I found it. Yeah, okay. Rick Bailey said two fifty a piece. Yeah, that's cheap. That's the cheapest I could find them anywhere. Uh, I looked. Uh, I looked everywhere, and I even bought some uh, mounts for the larger ones. I have some larger ones too. Not the. Not the nine gram ones, but the uh, I guess they call them standard ones, and um, they're a lot bigger. I'm not sure how many grams they are, but uh, I got some of them just in case. But what if I already bought bigger switch machines? I don't have servos. You could use you could use the bigger switch machines in there also. You could do it with the. Um, 
tortoise switch machines if you got those. Uh, like I said, uh, Milt Tigler did uh, mounted his uh, tortoise machines under the his uh, fast tracks and just dropped them into the, the layout just like that. But uh, you could do that with anything. I, I'm doing it with servos because that's what I'm going to be using on it. So let me see where we're at here. I know he said something about the Amherst one. Let me find this one. Okay. There's that. Page two. Okay. Got to go. Internet just too laggy on my end tonight. Huh? You know, we'll see you, Dave. Sorry it's slow for you. Okay. There's a quick attach for tortoise machines. I got some of those too for, for offset. Okay, but anyway, about the, I can't find the, uh, the uh, comment. Eminem Rail, sell them to go via or, or go home and get Tom to send you some and share the profit with me. Good idea. Yay. <laughs> All right. But anyway, uh, the question was, why don't, have you ever thought about going to the Amherst uh, one? Well, Amherst one is about 1,500 miles from here. 256 flathead screws for my pins. That's a good idea. All right. This is always a problem. I dropped a truck on the shed floor and can't find it or in the kingpin. Er. But anyway, Amherst, I thought about it, but it is way way too far for me and usually I think it's around the same time that scale rails of Southwest Florida has theirs in February I think that's when it is and and uh, I know uh, scale rails has theirs in uh, like the second weekend in, in February Chris Smith, can you use NCE to control the switch also? Uh, if you're talking about the servo, you need something that's 5 volts for the servo. Uh, for the switch, you could use anything on it. NCE, I think they have stuff um, that you could use with a tortoise or a cobalt or anything else, any kind of other switch machine. Uh, basically any uh, DCC system will operate your switches, your turnouts, uh, with a little finagling here and there with, uh, with uh, whatever you're using. How you control the servos. Glad you asked that. My goodness. I thought nobody would ever ask. Okay. Let me pull this up here. I did a video some time ago and it was uh, had to be in March. And right before we we left on vacation it was right before Easter. We left a couple of days after Easter to go on vacation. And I'm just going to show you a short piece of it and I'm going to put the link in the description and in the the um, uh, chat later on. As you can see, I got a lot of servos hooked up to this. In fact, one, two, three, four, six all together right now, just because I was playing around with the, with with some of the sketches that I have and just trying out different things on there. But what I have right now, as you can see on this servo right here, I have it going in uh, increments from the minimum and maximum and I'm going to show you how I came about that. It started out with a sketch from Adafruit. So it's okay. That's just a little portion of the video there. Um, what was it called? Turnout control with Arduino and a PCA 9685. 
you could do 16 servos on there now I did it with a with a uno on that particular one but uh, if you have a mega you can control more of them you could put more uh, uh, switches in there more LEDs and more uh, relays and what I'm going to do with this I this thing right here this is uh, Shinohara and this entire frog and rails both sides of the rail are all common uh, all common potential so that whatever position these points are in is what polarity goes to this whole track section right here so on this one I'm not quite sure what they call this one. I know on um, uh, Pico, which I just ordered some because I have some other, I have Atlas and they, uh, their frog is plastic. So I don't want to have any plastic frogs on there. So I bought the Electro Frogs for Pico for my turnouts on the module. But this one right here, whatever Walters calls this one, I'm not quite sure. I'd have to look it up. But the only thing on here is there's a little wiper right here where the pivot point is and that is the only contact point to bring your power up to the frog here now if that gets a little bit dirty or worn out uh, you're not going to get you know good contact and this is a good idea because you won't get any shorts in the frog you know like on most of them they'll have insulators up on either side of the frog they'll have them up here on each track here and each track I gotta get my fingers coordinated here each track like right here somewhere around there anyway you know what I'm talking about but there's always a possibility you know if if your if your wheel comes out a little bit too far it could short out in that frog so this is a really good idea that they use right there but the only thing with it you have to insulate all your probably only have to insulate these but it would be a good idea to insulate everything uh, just to make sure but uh, uh, that's a good idea I had to order some Pico like I said and get and get some uh, uh, electro frogs because I have some Atlas ones that I showed on uh, on the uh, module downstairs that uh, have the plastic frog on there and I, I don't want that so I want to what I'm going to do with the servos and let me bring up this right here okay that's not the one I wanted uh, Where is it? Okay. Hey, Possum Bayou. That deserves the strobe. Now, I'm not going to leave the strobe on a long time like the last time because everybody was complaining about it. So I'll just leave it on for a few things here. Thank you for the super chat. Okay. Uh... It was about Tam Valley, and uh, I, I see them up here, but I, it's kind of hard to find them back again on this thing that I have right here. So Tam Valley, okay, here we go. Tam Valley does have DCC servo switch machines by way of track power, and also where I got um, the servo mounts, Iowa Scaled Engineering, they used to make. And they still might have some available. They have the whole deal with the servo mounted in it and a little circuit board with a relay so you could uh, power the frogs also. Um, and I think there was only like about 18 bucks or something like that for the ones that has the, the double pull, double throw uh, relay in there. So for what reason, I don't know, but they quit making them. Um, the, the, in fact, even the uh, the servo mounts, 
they don't make they they show them uh, out of stock all the time when when I uh, ordered them I had to uh, send them an email and saying you know I noticed it was out of stock and they said well we'll, we'll put them uh, well we didn't change the the website and I, I noticed the website still wasn't changed after a couple of months so uh, I don't know that I guess that's their web uh, web hosting or web uh, whoever does their uh, web page is isn't keeping the thing up up to uh, up to date on there so we have to look into that but anyway um, before you know they said they were sold out I was able to get a couple of those uh, from Iowa Skelet Engineering and what else right here about Amherst I think I saw this one but Amherst is hard to get to always snow on the ground and that is an eight hour drive I made it once hope next year we'll make it again well for me that's probably about a two and a half day drive <laughs> it's about 1500 miles it takes us two days to get to Maryland that's 1100 miles for us or just under 1100 miles and Massachusetts is oh my goodness especially going through uh, New York City I try to avoid that as much as possible most of the times you know if I had to go up into New England instead of going up 95 I'd go up through Harrisburg and cut it you know go up through northern Pennsylvania and cut across on uh, 83 interstate 83 and go that way just to get away from New York City I had enough of uh, going through New York City and uh, what, what else uh, Garden State Parkway and uh, uh, I had to go up to West Point all the time we'll have to go up Palisades Parkway all the time get off at the very last exit right before the George Washington Bridge and head north up to Palisades Parkway 50 more miles up to uh, West Point and uh, that was that was that was terrible I had to go up there a lot in in the day but anyway okay only need to insulate the two center rails that's what I thought but uh, to just to be on the safe side I would I'd insulate all of them if you're going to insulate them insulate all of them so way to go possum by you yeah thank you very much okay Where do you think I'm sending the clown? He'll be waiting in the shed. Your next layout update will be very entertaining. I got to see that. Okay. Oops, missed the send button. Arduino easy. Just do it in bite-sized pieces, same way you eat an elephant, one bite at a time. Yeah, Arduino is easy. I got a lot of videos on Arduino made easy. Err because it's easy to begin with but uh, I know a lot of people uh, you know just have problems coding and I just tried to make it a little bit easier for some of those people you know just to get started on some of that stuff okay spoke with a 72 year old gentleman at a small show this past weekend he was concerned the hobby is dying I talked to him about the hobby online growth I was glad to see he was intrigued everybody all the old timers say the hobby is dying and they're full of bull it's not dying because there's a lot of people still in the hobby it's just moving away from the brick and mortar hobby shops all the hobby shops are are going uh, out of business some of them are still there the ones that are doing online sales they're still there like the one I the one I use in uh, Annapolis Maryland they're I mean they've grown about four times since I first went to them about 15 20 years ago but uh, it's not dying that's that's just uh, old folks saying that and I'm 68 and I, I considered you know old folks older than that but uh, it's not dying that that's the old really really old folks you know 75 and plus that uh, don't get out much and uh, you know only 
look at uh, what uh, other people were doing and uh, trying to figure out, you know, what's going on. They, they, they can't figure out the Internet. Arduino scares me, Rick Bailey says. It's it's real easy. Take a look at my videos. I got a whole series of 10 videos on everything you want to know about Arduino. Uh, you look look in my playlist, even on my webpage, Tom's Trains and Things dot com. You could see um, right there at, at the beginning of it. Uh, I have a link to the Arduino made easy. All all 10 or 11 of the uh, lessons that I did and some of the projects that I did the more advanced stuff Bennett Hill trains also does server control systems in modular systems that's good to know Bennett Hill trains we got to look this stuff up huh but uh, I'm only one person here Debbie's over there I think she's falling asleep Okay, Chris Smith, don't think so because you can, can't can tell the servo to stop with the MK2. Okay, so I missed what the other one was with the MK2, but uh, with the Arduino and the PCA9685, you can make it stop anywhere that you want to. In fact, all you need is maybe less than a, a 10 degree motion. Oh, no, oh, Debbie says no, she's not sleeping. All you need is like 10 degree motion to get that to work right there. And uh, speaking of that, I have a way. Let me see. Here's another one. It's an easy, easy way to test your servos right here. And I did a video on that. Wouldn't you know, huh? Watch this. I'll just give you a, a, a little bit of it. I just posted a couple of videos on YouTube for servos and showed you how to test them with Arduino. But what if you don't want to get out your Arduino Uno and load the sketch on there and test your servo? Well, I have a small tester here that I'll show you how to use. And it's not that expensive. Here's what I'm talking about. Now, first of all, you're going to need 5 volts on this side right here to supply voltage to your servos. You could hook up 1 to 3 servos on it. You can see I have 3 servos hooked up. Let me put the power on. Now you can see this is manufactured for a lot of different companies, but uh, you can get the best deal on Amazon. Okay, that's about enough of that, but you get the idea. Uh, you can test your servos with that. Tom, I'm 83 and just started a two-car garage layout. The hobby is not dead. Good deal. All right, there's there's an old folk right there that believes that the, the hobby is not dead. You're right, the hobby is not dead. It's not going anywhere. If you go to any train shows, you'll see that it's not dead. So... Hey, Vinny, I'm uh, glad you stopping by. Just saw you here. Okay, Joe G, good to see you here. Glad you made it. Okay. Not that one. Have you done a video on the ACS 712? No, I haven't. I'll have to figure out what an ACS 712 is and... Once I figure it out, maybe I'll do a video on it. Uh, can you explain what an ACS ACS712 is? I bought a Raspberry Pi, ate it, and still nothing changed with my track work. I'll have to rewatch your video series. I, you must have did something wrong with it. <laughs> you have to go back and, and, and rewatch it, binge watch. Just play it over and over again until you get it. You're not supposed to eat them. All right, where are we at here? Okay, 
Servo tester works great. Yes, they do work great. The one I have is a real cheap one. I think I only paid about maybe less than five dollars for it. I mean, they have um, actually you could test three servos at a time on this one here, but they have ones that are up to maybe forty or fifty dollars high tech stuff, which you really don't need. All, all you need to do on this one is to to get it to to center, and once you have it centered then you could figure out what and from the other video that I have you could figure out what I what uh, range that you actually need on there okay let me see who else we got here I explain the online modeling presence to him he's going to okay all right I explained the online modeling presence to him. He's going to ask his grandkids to help him with YouTube and Facebook. That's a good idea. There's a lot of stuff on YouTube. There's a lot of stuff on Facebook also. And both of them are, you know, I have a Facebook page and YouTube also. Uh, I try to put put everything that I have on YouTube onto Facebook also to, to expand. But... Uh, Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. But that's a good idea. Grandkids, my my grandson told me a lot about uh, the, his cell phone when he was doing. He got he got kicked off of YouTube because he was uh, playing games on there and using the the music, and um, he didn't tell his mom about uh, the letters that he got from YouTube saying that he has to take those down. So he he got banned. But my granddaughter is on there, Bake Away with Maddie. She was here last week. In fact, she was wearing the same t I, I noticed in the chat afterwards she was wearing the same t-shirt that I was. I gave her, I gave all my grandkids Tom's Trains and Things t-shirts. All right. Okay, I started running JMRI on my Raspberry Pi. Moved back to the PC just for more functions. Um... What functions weren't you able to get on the Raspberry Pi? Because you could you, just about everything that you could do on a PC, you could do on a Raspberry Pi. It's just a mini, mini computer. In fact, I use, I got all kind of junk on top of it, but I use my tablet. I hook up my tablet as a monitor. I could also use it as a keyboard with Raspberry Pi and I use actually this oh, let, me, let me get it where the light isn't on it but where is it at VCN viewer over here on this side let me get this out of the way this one right here VCN viewer you could use that to use anything for a monitor with the Raspberry Pi and I'm not sure, but uh, NDI is also a uh, good deal. Now, I don't even have to be hooked. Uh, this is a, a Windows thing, but I can't hook up my computers. This computer here with the computer in there. Both of them are Windows 10, and I have gone through every everything that everybody's put out on how to connect them. I could see the computer, but every time I try to connect, it says, you're not authorized. And I have gone through everything. I had that computer hooked up to my old Windows 7 computer. No problem. As long as my Windows 7 computer was on the system, I was able to get all the computers to talk but my Windows 7 computer broke. And so now all I have is Windows 10. I have two Windows 10 computers and the one that Debbie's is on is a Windows 7 computer. Now she could talk between that one and one in my in the office. They're side by side. They can communicate with each other but not this one, this one in here. So NDI let me pull this up. That right there is the screen on my computer in the office. 
Now, if I put something up on that screen, uh, you'd be able to see it. But I could do that without Windows uh, Home Group or whatever their networking or whatever. Um, as long as you're on the same network, it picks it up. So if you got a Raspberry Pi or anything like that. All right. Rick Bailey, Tom, I can help with that. IT by trade. Give me, uh, send me an email, Tom's Trains and Things at gmail.com. Uh, and if you can't remember it, it's, uh, I think it's in the description. And let me get it over here. Let me put it in the uh, thing right here. Okay. But anyway, send me an email because I have spent hours and hours and even days on it. Let me see. Where's my email? Uh, okay. Get this out of the way. Okay. Oops. Didn't put it in there. There we go. Okay. I put it in twice. Okay. <laughs> I didn't scroll down automatically. Okay. All right. So. I see some more questions in here. Okay, now, okay. It's a track voltage detector that can be used as a block occupancy detector with an Arduino. Okay, who, who's the, okay, my next question is who's the manufacturer? <laughs> I should have asked, I should have asked that at the beginning. Okay. All right, Pi work grade just. All right, Pi work grade just doesn't want to separate PC for internet, radio, and other such stuff. Oh, okay, so on the on the one video that I have, um, and I'm not going to even try to think of what the name of the video is, but I did a a, a video on hooking up your uh, tablet or your cell phone to it and then the guy that does the engine driver he chimed in and he has a program that all you have to do is, is install it on Raspberry Pi and I mean it does everything automatic boom you don't have to do any settings on it it'll it will Raspberry Pi has its own um, Ethernet so it'll create its own Wi-Fi for anything that you need and it you know if you have a Wi-Fi for it for your JMRI and on your Raspberry Pi and you need to connect to you know your Wi-Fi on your because what I did was I didn't I don't use the Wi-Fi for all my computers I had a separate router for mine and what I did was I just kept that separate and just use that for the the JMRI but uh, since I got the Raspberry Pi, it has the Wi-Fi built into it, so you don't even need that. And uh, the guy helped me out a lot on that. And um, it was about uh, the beginning of the year. I think it was the, let me see if I can find it. Okay. I got it up here. Let me see if I can find the guy's name here. I got to go through the chat in that video there. His name is Steve Todd. Okay. Let me pull this up over here. Okay, JMRI Raspberry Pi as access point. And you can see uh, that right there. And I'll put that in the 
in the chat so you can see it. But you just you you just mount this on the uh, the card, and it puts uh, Raspberry Pi. I think it, I think the way it does it, it puts Raspberry Pi and JMRI on it. You don't have to do anything with it. You just you you just mount that instead of mounting you know how you how you mount the uh, uh, operating system on the Raspberry Pi or and mount JMRI on it. You just mount that on there and it takes care of everything. And let me put that in the in the chat here. The link to that. But I mean that. That does everything for you. You don't have to. You don't have to set up anything. Okay, so let's get back to this over here. Okay, Steve Todd is where I got my pie image. Oh, okay, okay, good. Okay, I like cherry pie best. I like lemon meringue pie and key lime pie. Ooh, yeah. All right. Okay. Tom trains and thing. What made you go with Arduino instead of other manufactured parts? Did you start with Arduino or switch to later on in your layout build? On this layout here, I have Digitrax. And I played around with Arduino for five, six years. I mean, I've, I've had, you know, I just, I've always liked, uh, gizmos, electronics, and stuff like that. And I wanted to do the whole module with Arduino. Uh, so I could use that as a, uh, a learning experience for everybody so they could, you know, do things in Arduino. Mmm. Yeah, there you go. All right, so that's my story, and I'm sticking to it. That's we uh, okay. We ran a Raspberry Pi with Octo Print on a 3D printer, so we don't have to be in the room when printing, but still have control. That's a good idea. All right. Yeah, Windows 7 and XP were the most user-friendly interface. Microsoft ever produced. Yeah, I, I've never had any problem connected to any computer until Windows 10. And when I first got the first Windows 10, I, you know, I was able through Windows 7 to connect to it, and I connected to all my other Windows 7 computers. But ever since I, you know, got two Windows 10 computers and then Debbie has a, a laptop it's Windows 10 I can't connect it uh, I see maybe I'll email you and we can chat yeah I, I really appreciate it I, I I'm really stuck with it I've tried I've tried everything I've gone through all the knowledge base and tried everything that they did I went went through uh, you know everything that I could find on the internet and I spent days on it and I could not get it all I get is an error let me see if I could pull this up let me see where's my thing here That's what I get. Windows can't access Tom Alien. Check the spelling of the name, otherwise there may be a problem. And when I go through the diagnose, it, it I'm not going to go through the diagnose now, but it it <laughs> it it can't figure it out either. So <laughs> so I don't know what to do with it. Uh, you know, and I get that I get that all the time. With now, if I I record on this. Uh, I record and live stream on this computer right here. That's all I do on this one. And the one in the 
in the uh, spare bedroom is where I do my editing and where I do all my Arduino stuff and that thing is loaded up with all kind of programs I, I mean I got I had to delete all kind of programs off of there just to just to make room because I got an SSD card for the for the boot for the boot uh, drive and I, I didn't want to load it up too much so I had to remove a lot of programs off of there but anyway uh, I have to go on that computer over there and I could bring up this computer here and I have to take the files from here and bring them back over to there but I can't take the files from here and take them over to that computer I have to do it the other way around that's the only way that I have connectivity and I cannot get this computer to recognize that computer over there I cannot I cannot get the XP computer it used to be able to connect but I have to do it from the from the Windows no it's the other way around I have to use the Windows uh, 7 computer to connect to the Windows 10 computer but I can't do it from the 10 back to the Windows 7 just something about that it doesn't recognize it and I, I cannot get any of my Windows 10 computers to to talk to each other When Microsoft stopped XP, I bit the bullet and swapped to Apple and never went back. Well, uh, you're a brave man there. I wouldn't go to Apple. <laughs> Can I use an ESU lock programmer with a Raspberry Pi? I'm not sure, but I'll look it up. ESU lock programmer. Is that the same thing as the uh, ESU... Uh, I got an ESU uh, programmer. I'm not sure. No, it's a decoder tester. That's what it is. It's not the programmer. It's a decoder tester. Uh, I'm not sure, but uh, I got to look that up. Okay, now ACS712 Hall Effect Current Sensor is an electronic component made by multiple manufacturers, researched but not tested myself. Users have made had mixed results with DCC. Okay. Hall effect current sensor. Okay, now I know what you're talking about. Someone else told me about using the little um, uh, coils also to uh, for uh, block detection, and uh, I haven't tried that yet, but uh, I'll be looking into that also. Thank you very much for that information. Okay. Oh my goodness. Do people still use Skype? <laughs> I quit using that a long time ago. Windows 10 will not talk to XP. XP does not have the proper security protocols. Yeah, I don't. I, don't, I have an old XP computer. I don't use the, the the oldest one I have is a Windows 7, and I can't get them to talk back and forth. You know, it, it, it's only one way. The Windows 7 can grab. I could take files off of my Windows 7 computer and put it on my Windows 10, but from a Windows 10, I can't look at the uh, Windows 7 and grab the files off of there. So I have to play musical chairs to get things done here. Okay, we've been on here for 59 minutes, and I'm I still haven't. We're still at partway here. I'm doing. How you doing, Nathan Delay? Good to see you. Okay. Skype is now owned by Microsoft, and that's that's where Skype went downhill. Uh, what when was it? About five years ago, when Microsoft bought or started uh, doing Skype. Uh, I used Skype a long, long time ago when it first came out, uh, and uh, when Microsoft took over it. I mean, it messed up all my, I mean, I had, 
I must have had 20 contacts in there. It messed up all my contacts. I couldn't get a hold of anybody on there. So I just quit using it back then. It, whenever I do anything, I either, well, you can't use, uh, the, well, yeah, I still use the, the Google one. Okay, Tom, did Windows just do an, an update for you? I got when I got updates turned off because I got tired of them doing updates right in the middle of when I was doing something. Luckily, this program I hear, have here for streaming, it blocks all updates whenever you're streaming. But uh, when you know, I'd be doing something, I'd be editing, and Window would start an update. So I, I just, I, it took me. It took me days to find that and how to do that too. And now when I want to go back and and do an update on it, it says you can't do update because your your uh, <laughs> your uh, whatever uh, whatever it is uh, IT guy your IT doesn't allow updates. I use Facebook Messenger with FaceTime or video calling and FaceTime on cell phones. Uh, uh, FaceTime, that's uh, an iPhone thing. Yeah, my, my grandkids use that, but uh, whenever I contact them, I use the Google one. And there's another one that is really good. It's Zoom, and it's free for, you know, back and forth like that. It, and you could have multiple people on it if you keep it under 40 minutes. So that's a good one to have. Did it mess stuff up on you? Yes. When I first got that computer, it kept changing my uh, power options. I would put my power options to never. Never turn off my hard drive. Never turn off my monitor. And it would always change it. To one minute so I'd be I you know I would do I would turn around and do something and pff, it would go out and I would have to go back and change it and it did that so many times when I had that when that computer was new and finally I just gave up I, I, I just figured out I went on and just said I'm gonna figure out how to stop all the updates because you can't stop updates on it unless you go through uh, 20 different things in go deep inside of Windows uh, to get get it to stop. Uh, it's complicated, but I, I I I have a file on the other computer, which I can't get from this one. That with all the instructions on it, <laughs> just in case I have to go back. Hey, Will Kling, how you doing? Glad you can make it here. Party rather FaceTime than Skype. Oh, yeah, but you gotta have you gotta have an iPhone for that. No Facebook for me. Facebook Facebook is the devil. Yeah, I'm starting to think the same thing. No FaceTime for me. I'm Android. Yeah, yeah. Um, Hangouts, Google Hangouts. I think yeah, they still. They still have Hangouts, and it works pretty good. Uh, let me see. When was the last time I used it? It was around Christmas time when I was talking to the grandkids on, on the Hangouts. But, uh, yeah, Hangouts is pretty good. But Zoom Zoom is good also. Um, it's, it's free. I mean, they have paid stuff on it, but uh, it, it's used for video conferencing, actually. And it works better than, uh, what's that other one, Appearian. Uh, Appearian just uh, changed their name. I got a notice about that. But anyway, my goodness. Let's... Okay, here's one right here. Nathan... Del or Nathan... Tom, what type of program do you use to make your videos? I used uh, I used uh, Vegas Pro. What is my on now? Sixteen? Yeah, sixteen. I haven't got seventeen yet. I bought sixteen a month before seventeen came out, 
and they had a promotion like two weeks after that if you bought it and I asked them if I can get it and they said no when Sony had Vegas they, they would let you do it but whenever magics took over uh, they don't let you do anything they they raise the price on updates too but I use uh, Vegas Pro 16 I've been using that for 15 16 years now I started out with I think it was called Sonic Foundry something like that it, it it actually started out as an audio editing program and they went to video and you a lot of people still use it as an audio editing program because it's real good with that hey Black Mountain Station how you doing all right we also have EMPR Railroad 93 good to see ya all right I'm using 16 as well I actually when I went on vacation I got six, 16 uh, Vegas studio I got the 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 uh, lower version for the laptop and um, it you know it doesn't have all the bells and whistles as the pro version uh, <laughs> sorry Debbie I ran away with the show <laughs> yeah <laughs> We're talking about Windows, huh? All right. I think Vegas Pro 15. I think I think I got that. I have. I have. Let me see. 13. I think I skipped 15. I'm not sure, but I went 13, 14, and then 16. So I'll probably wait until 18 comes out to get the get the next one. I got uh, the suite this time to get all the good stuff on it and uh, you pay a little bit extra for it but uh, it has a lot of extra stuff on there um, I don't use all of it I still have I still have to figure out how to use it <laughs> but uh, I, I mean I've been using you know the Vegas products for you know 18 years or so something like that it's been a long time since 2000 let me see this is 19 since about 2003 so that's 16 years 16 years all right okay I used to make my movies iMovie okay so what are you using now so I don't like it it crashes on me lots I I had that problem with four with 14 it crashed on me a lot too and uh, what I got in the habit of doing was every time I every time I changed something on the timeline I would save it. it it takes a long time but it's a lot better than having a crash on you and realizing that the automatic update didn't update when it was supposed to and you go back and you got 10 minutes worth of work or 10 or 15 minutes worth of work that you have to do over again because it crashed because it didn't save it I think I have mine set for five minutes but it doesn't always save it at five minutes so what I do is every time that I change something on the timeline boom I hit the save I hit control S and I, I and if it crashes I'm right there I don't have to worry about it anymore that I that's what I suggest with, with using Vegas uh, if you're having problems with it crashing just save it constantly and then you won't have to go back and redo your work all the time you had it I save after every move and edit that's that's a good idea mine crashes less now so frustrating I hear you Vinny yep I don't make videos so I'm lost can't help you there guy hey we'll teach you how to do it I got a video on that too okay okay you use iMovie so let me see who else was using Randy was using iMovie when it crashes get one chance to bring it back well they they do have 
they do have that chance where but that's not always a current backup file. They have the, you know, whatever your file name is instead of the VEG, it's BAK. It's not always current. So that, that's what I found out. That's why I hit the save all the time because you, you can't always uh, you can't always uh, depend on it. I have Vegas Pro 70 now. I can't upload a video to YouTube now. It gets to 91% and gets stuck. Uh, do you have a new computer or an old computer when you're doing that? I'm an IT guy and the only PC I own is the one I use for JMR. <laughs> you know, my my brother-in-law, um, he's an old timer IBM guy and he was doing, you know, Fortran and all that stuff when when I was like 10 years old, he took me to uh, where he worked in Hartford, Connecticut, and the computer was bigger than this house. <laughs> And they had false floors with all kind of wires running everywhere and these big tapes running everywhere. And he was showing me the, the cards. They, they would they would play games with the cards, running them down the, the, the thing, you know, making it look like a waterfall. But uh, he said when he got home, he doesn't want anything to do with computers. He, you know, he's like 80, 80 some, 85, 80, 86 years old now. He, he doesn't do anything on a computer. He says... When, when I'm done with that, I don't want to see a computer. <laughs> My son's the same way. He works for, for Volvo. He's on a computer all day. He's a, a parts manager at Volvo. And when he gets home, he's not on a computer. He's got a Facebook page. He's never on it. He, he, he I think his wife uh, started the Facebook page, and that's where it stayed. But, yeah, I, I understand. Was, I, I did computers all the time, and I, but I still went home and worked on the stuff. I use Shotcut. It's free. Okay. Not familiar with that. Okay. You got a new computer and you got Vegas Pro 17 and it's only going to 91%. How much memory do you have? Oh, <laughs> I just saw that. Might be your memory. Yeah, I have bad memory too. <laughs> but that's not the memory we were talking about. Would have loved to seen that, Tom. I feel the same as your your brother when I'm home. It trains and kids. 60-40 train wins. <laughs> yeah, I uh, that was amazing when uh, I get what were they key punch operators, you know, punch the little holes in in the little cards. It, it was it was great. <laughs> I think I was only 10 years old, but that that, you know, that's 58 years ago. And then we went to the New York's World Fair and he spent almost all day at the IBM pavilion there. <laughs> When, when was that? 1962 or something like that? Yeah. Tom, you're doing my job now. <laughs> okay. All right. Hey, Hot Rod Rodney is here. I told Debbie that I would only do this for an hour. I'm a little bit over, and I haven't even got halfway through anything. I, these are all the questions that I missed from last week. And I may have to do it uh because some other time i may have to do that next week because we got a little bit off topic here but what i want to do before we go anywhere i wanted to do a where is this
we go with another shout out Monday evening. Boy, do I like to say that. And if you like rail fanning in the eyes of a youngster, then you're going to like this one here. Let me see. LJL Rail Yard. 15 years old. I haven't seen him here in the last couple of ones, but he used to spend some time on here. In fact, uh, he celebrated his 15th birthday on, uh, on one of my live streams here. But anyway, go check him out if you haven't done so already. I know some of you have already subscribed to him because I see in the comments that uh, you're commenting on his videos. But he has a lot of good rail fanning videos He got a lot of trains in Ohio. Uh, that's where he's from. His dad takes them out and uh, they do rail fanning a lot. So check him out. LJL Rail, rail Yard. And he's got a Facebook page too. And I'll put his information in. Let me get it right here. I'll put his Facebook page and his uh, YouTube channel on here. There's the two links. I hope it didn't Dad, run them. Maddie, say hello. Oh, hello, Maddie. I see, I see that right there. Hello, Maddie. There's Maddie. Bake away with Maddie, my granddaughter. She's finally on there. What are you doing up so late? Don't you have school? <laughs> There she goes, my granddaughter. Bake away with Maddie. She does good baking. We're going to be up there Christmas to see you between Christmas and New Year's. So, can't wait. I hope it's not cold like it was the last time we was up there. The last time we was up there it was 17 degrees. Alright, so, go check him out. We got the... Uh, we got the two uh, links up there in the uh, chat. And, boy, what did I forget today? Possum by you gave me a super chat earlier today. And you could help support this channel by super chat, Patreon, or PayPal. I have my PayPal me account. I think it was in the description of this video. So if you haven't done so already, go ahead and do all that stuff because it costs money to do this. All right. And let me put these other links in the description because we're going to cut this off pretty soon. Let me give me some room here. I'm going to put the keyboard right in front of me. But if you would like to donate to the cause here. I would very much appreciate it. And I'd even give you a little bit of a strobe here. So there's how to test your servos with a servo tester. And here's the other one using the PCA 9685. That's that one. Okay. And where is Oh yeah, let me put this other one here now. If you like the music that you hear on this channel. Epidemic Sound. They finally got a affiliate link on there for it. So you can check it, that out. I'd appreciate it. You could get music for it. It's only $15 a month. And they got better music than uh, YouTube music and uh, Bob's music or whoever is the Rick's music or whoever that is. Uh, <laughs> and you'll know, you be sure that you won't get any copyright strikes on it as long as you're uh, putting out, uh, you're paying the $15 a month and using it on your current ones. If you're using it on, if you stop paying and you still continue to use it on your new ones, 
then they can still get you YouTube could still get you there is the the PayPal QR code right there if you have your iPhone out there you can do that and that'll get you right to my PayPal account and you can always freeze that all right Nathan thank you for subscribing to bake away with Maddie she really appreciates it say thank you Maddie if you're still here okay all right let me oops all right we got us a super chat okay let me get this off of here get that off of there all right here we go I won't keep it on long this time but thank you very much da, 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 da. <laughs> all right thank you very much for the super chat it helps out why because I was just figuring out how much it cost me to do all these things and you don't want to know how much it cost all right here we go bake away with Maddie I will definitely make them thanks for the idea Wednesday I am making apple pie but next week I can see if I can make the chocolate muffins I always love them when people give me ideas good deal all right so Maddie those those little tarts that you have up on your uh, YouTube page I hope you make them when we're there because we didn't get a chance to eat them the last time because <laughs> Charlie ate them. <laughs> That's her dog. He got in a refrigerator. <laughs> so, all right. And Nathan says, you're welcome. Okay. Good deal. Okay, what else do we got here? I'm going to skip. Oh, right. Wait a minute. I had one more thing that I wanted to show you. Because I usually do a segment where uh, train of thought. I got to put this right here. But my train of thought has left the station. I don't. I'm all thought out. I've been on a diet. Actually, me and Debbie's been on a diet for three weeks now. We both lost about 11 pounds. Yay! I need some sound effects on here. But. Uh, I'm hungry and I'm cranky <laughs> and I can't think so that's why there's no train of thought but anyway let's wrap this thing up we got one more thing here Maddie need to share now Sparky just made us all hungry all right P oh my goodness peanut butter chocolate chip cookies is my favorite I like oatmeal raisin you know you're talking about food and I'm on a diet both Debbie and I are on a diet we're eating salad we're eating tuna fish what else we eat we're yeah I'm eating those water cars water uh, crackers with zero fat zero cholesterol zero everything and it tastes like zero also <laughs> putting that in uh, hummus I'm hungry Debbie's hungry okay we're gonna wrap this thing up I just got some of those cookies Sparky well wow. losing weight oh excuse me but anyway Every week now, the next show is going to be October 14th. And next week, I promise I'll get to all these things right here that I missed last week. And I hope I got uh, everybody, everybody's question in here. If I, don't, if I didn't, I'll, I'll have to uh, go back and check. Uh, okay so so that's all the stuff all right thanks for coming by I'm gonna put this thing up here and don't forget PayPal you yeah uh, and PayPal YouTube doesn't take anything out for PayPal so that's straight I get 100% um, if you want some good music 
Um, epidemic sound. Good stuff. Good night, all. Thanks for stopping by. We'll see you next week. And uh, have a good week. And uh, what is it? Next, don't forget, if you're in Florida, the Tampa area, north of Tampa, uh, Suncoast Center for Fine Scale Modeling on the 19th, I think it is. Uh, have a nice, okay, here we go. Have an awesome night, everyone. Nathan, thank you. Okay, Sparky is announcing the winners of the live stream contest from last week, this Wednesday. Good deal. Uh, also, what did you say la last time we was on here? You didn't put the video up yet. You were going to put the video, aren't you going to put the video up there for the Strasburg thing? You put one video up there and asked everybody to do it, and I put my name up on there, and uh, I guess you forgot about that one, but... Uh, when are you going to put that video up there before I get out of here? And once you answer that, then I yeah yeah you hope it's me. <laughs> I didn't get to watch it. I just got to watch the replay. But anyway, everybody have a good evening. Uh, let me get this out of here. And if Sparky puts the thing up, then I'll. Uh, Oh, soon, but nothing will load. Okay. <laughs> All right. So until the next time, we'll see you.